the Joe Rogan experience. So when did you know that you wanted to be a chef? Like, how long have you been, like, really into cooking? Because you're a young guy. By the way, congratulations on the Michelin stars. Thank you. That's a Thank that's you. giant, right? In the world of chefs, that's that's the fucking thing, right? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I dedicated the last probably 15 years of my life just to trying to get a Michelin star. And uh, when I found out this year, uh, they had me on a, on a Zoom call. They kind of, they kind of lied to me. They kind of, uh, what they did is they said, uh, we wanted, they said, first of all, I said, you're not going to, you're not getting a star this year, just so you know, but we want to have, uh, send someone to the restaurant in Los Angeles. And, um, we have some interview questions we want to ask you about, uh, you know, how it was to operate during COVID. And I said, well, I'm in Austin, but I, I can fly back. And they're like, no, no big deal. Don't fly back. Just, just zoom in. So I zoom in. And they have my wife, uh, who's our pastry chef and my business partner. Um, she's at the restaurant. And so is my brother, who is the chef of uh, uh, Sushi Bar in Montecito uh, and our chef at uh, Pasta Bar. And they're all three there uh, just in the restaurant. And I'm at my house here in Austin and I'm on Zoom. And they start asking us some random questions about, uh, you know, how is it, you know, what's it like being open and what have been the, 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 you know, pitfalls you had to overcome. And uh, then out of nowhere, they just go, oh, and um, I have one extra question. Um, uh, congratulations. Uh, two of your restaurants are getting Michelin stars. Oh, they <laughs> snuck it in on they you. They snuck it in. And I'm oh. on. And the thing is, I'm on a Zoom. And so I was like, wait, what? What did she say? Like, I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't hear. And, and everyone, it, it, and I thought we had just gotten one. And it turned out, they said, no, no, no. And I said, wait, what, which, rest, which restaurant? And they said, sushi bar. Montecito and uh, uh, and pasta bar, and uh, I just and started, pasta bars in L.A. Pasta bars in L.A. and um, I just started crying. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I was just reading uh, on the history of the Michelin star, and that it was really back in the early days of travel. Mm -hmm. They had a book would show you where you can get your car repaired, where you could refuel. And then where you can get something to eat. Yeah, and it, then people got really obsessed with the where to get something to eat part. And then it became a separate entity. It was never – I don't think they ever set out to become the world standard on cuisine. I don't think that was ever the point. The point was we have to give you a reason to buy tires and that reason is to drive. And so here's some things to drive to. And so that's what the one star, two star, three star – you know, delineations have to, have to do with is this one is worth, you know, a stop. This one's worth a detour and this one's worth a journey. Oh. And so that's how you get one star, two star, three star. So one star means if it's on your way, stop. That was over a hundred years ago. Now one star means, you know, fly there. But three star means like upend your life and go figure, like go find that place. What's, what's that? Who's got three stars? Uh, here in America, not many McDonald's. people. McDonald's, yes. McDonald's I, think they have, I, I think they have four stars, actually. <laughs> is there, is there uh, anywhere in America that has three? Uh, yeah, a couple, couple places. Like what? Uh, the French Laundry has three stars. Oh, okay. That's that place where Gavin Newsom got in trouble, right? I watched a video on that. Um, not on that, but on uh, Bourdain. When Bourdain, uh, I think it was the old show. I think it wasn't even, I think it was No Reservations. No reservations yeah. yeah, and he went to French Laundry. It was pretty fucking incredible. Yeah, I've only got to eat there once, but it's, I mean, it's a, it's an institution. It's that good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it, it, for a long time, it was the restaurant in America. Mm. The? It was the restaurant And isn't in it kind of a weird spot? Like, you got to travel? Yeah, but that's part of sort of the allure of, and not to say they wouldn't be a three-star restaurant without, you know, having that, uh, that part of traveling, but three stars is when you're worth the journey. Mm. And, um, so you could be in like the Himalayas or some shit. Yeah. I mean, a lot of some of the, the three-star restaurants around the world are not in, you know, they're not in strip malls. They're not in city centers. They're, you know, they've bought ranches. They've bought, uh, you know, they have land. Uh, mm. El Bulli was on the top of a mountain. Where's El Bulli? Well, that's been closed for a long time, but that was in Spain. Oh Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, there's You're saying it like I know. I don't know any. This <laughs> listen, <laughs> you, let me into your world. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. What's El Bulli? Uh, so that was Fair and Adria. Um, they uh, they were named best restaurant in the world several years over. Um, it was really the restaurant that uh, 
really brought what became known as molecular gastronomy, the, all the food that's, that, you know, Jamie would probably look at and say, this is, what, what am I looking at? This doesn't look like food. This looks like interesting abstract art. Um, but, you know, they fig, you know, today you have restaurants where, you know, you'll get literally a balloon that's brought out to the table and you eat the, suck the helium out and eat the balloon. And that's, you know, one of the courses. Oh, wow. 12 iconic dishes of El Bulli. Mm. So this is like fancy dining, and this is like... It's beyond fancy dining. It's, someone it's from Jamie's lineage would look about this. And, <laughs> well, yeah. if, if you asked him, is this, like, what is this? And you didn't tell him it was... You wouldn't think that was food. Yeah, Jamie's not into this. I could tell already. Uh, is that sea urchin? <laughs> that, that is sea urchin. Oh, delicious. Do you like sea urchin? No, I'm, of course I he just tried but, octopus recently. And? Yeah, oh, okay. I feel bad eating octopus because I found out how fucking smart they are. I know, are. that's what I thought. I was like, I'll try it so I can say I tried it, but... They're, but they're, you know... They're it's fucking, so fucking good, though. They're very good, but they are murderers. I mean, they murder everything. Yeah, I'd rather have macaroni and cheese and steak or... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> macaroni and cheese. I'm just saying, like, I'd, I'd rather have something else. 